Hi everyone, my name is Chadwick Chochi. Greenwich chose us. And I can't wait for you to see inside. So it's a, it's a great neighborhood. That is incredible. Again, an explosion of flavor. It's always good to have a friend with a boat, right? The search is over, baby. I'm right here, and I got it. The American Dream, the only show that combats negative media, not owned by a network, commercial free, unscripted. I got it. These are stories for you and by you. Hi everyone, my name is Chadwick Chochi and I'm the founder and CEO of Chilton & Chadwick Global Real Estate Concierge. Chilton & Chadwick Global Real Estate Concierge is an exclusive team with Embedder Homes and Gardens Shore & Country Property. But we're so much more than just a sales team. In addition to real estate, we also offer services in art advising and acquisition, construction, design, and even cleaning. From the sheetrock to the sheets, we'll take care of all of it for you. Absolutely. Today we're going to show you Fairfield County in the amazing state of Connecticut. We'll go from mansions to an incredible multifamily opportunity. We're also going to show you some outstanding artwork and some incredible interiors. Let's go see some real estate. So we're here in backcountry Greenwich today uh, with my friends Steve and Carol Acunto. I want to sit with you guys because you know, you're such ambassadors for the town of Greenwich. And so I just want to sit with you and kind of talk about what you like about Greenwich, why you chose to live here. I know you've lived all over the world and you chose Greenwich for a reason. So I just want to hear from you guys what some of those reasons were. Well, well I, I guess uh, I, I sometimes think that Greenwich chose us. We were living in Westchester, but we chose Greenwich after it chose us. We chose backcountry Greenwich specifically because it has a, an ex-urban feel rather than a suburban feel. You know, it's, it's got a feel of enormous privacy. And we entertain all the time. Oh, yeah. I mean, we love entertaining. It's one of the reasons why we have this size house. I mean, that, the beauty is that you have the backcountry and you, you feel like you are somewhat remote because of, of the spaciousness between the houses and all the beautiful greenery and not the totally landscaped uh, golf course looking right. houses. Yeah, yeah. Uh, just the opposite. You have the wetlands and you have this little rough feel to it, yet it's, it's beautiful. But then you have the city part of it, which is city, but it's, it's very low key. But it has all the most exclusive shops. Whereas you once felt the need to go to the city, Yep. Honestly, you every, don't have to. everything is right. here. You don't have to move. Right. People stay here. But So what do you guys enjoy doing here while you're in Greenwich? We play golf because obviously uh, golf is a big part of uh, Greenwich. In town we go to the Indian Harbor Yacht Club yep. which is lovely and uh, so many beautiful boats and our, a lot of friends have boats so we enjoy that. It's always good to have a friend with a boat, right? But one of the things that's most impressive about you guys is your true patrons of the art, right? I mean, the closest thing to real life Medici that maybe I've ever <laughs> met. Um, tell us about some of your, your passions and your interests and your collections when it comes to music and art and things of that nature. Well, uh, we've, always, you, we've always supported young artists as well. And so when you say what our passion is, yeah. it's to encourage the young people to embrace uh, opera, uh, the uh, classical music, and sure. it's something that could be a dying art, Absolutely. but we have to support it. So, but in addition to your, your passion for music and opera and plays, um, and you polo. also- And polo. But <laughs> you also have quite a passion for collecting um, paintings and for sculpture. Well, a lot of the things that we have have been uh, inherited from the family. Mm -hmm. When you inherit something, for example, that uh, antique clock, which was my great-grandfather's. What do you do with it? It's 10 feet tall, irreplaceable. Yep. So you preserve it, enhance it, you live with it, 
It becomes part of your, uh, your, your psychological wallpaper, if you will. We're not avid collectors. So when you collect that way, you're, no, you're not merchandising. And as you know, today things are, the art market, I mean, let, let me just say this to you. There's a lot of true junk that is marketed because of the name value or the brand value. It's just nothing. Uh, many of the modern works that I've seen are tawdry, ill-conceived, and w they show no manufacturing value. Now, not all of them, I'm not saying everyone, but for us, retaining what is uh, real masterwork is significant. Yeah, we don't dislike modern mm -hmm. or contemporary, but obviously we, we look at it through a different eye. Sure. So you guys are collecting art, but Greenwich itself really has quite an art scene actually. Have it you does, there's so many galleries. Uh, and openings, I mean, I think it, it says a lot about the community itself, which appreciates the art and supports the art scene. I, I am amazed at the generosity of people in this community, amazed, and how they do big things, some big scale things. So, you know, it was always, it was a pleasure a couple of years ago when I met your daughter, Claudia, and, you know, I love contemporary art and she's a contemporary artist, but what I find fascinating about her work is how she borrows and looks back for inspiration to the medieval, to the ancient, to the religious, but then contemporizes it from modern times so that today's viewer can appreciate those images and those messages. You've caught it exactly. But, and, and she works with a lot of mixed media, so there's collaging, there's digital work, there's painting. There's, she's really incredibly talented and, and multifaceted. And she uses materials, I mean mm -hmm. lace, you'll find lace and exotic and even ancient materials mm -hmm. that she buys off the market and everything else. And I, I love the way she pulls it all together. Yeah. She does representative art. It's, it's got great conception behind it. And it's not merely self-expression. Well guys, I really just want to thank you so much for your hospitality, for your introduction to Greenwich and your beautiful life. And uh, we hope to have you back on another episode soon. Here we are in lovely Fairfield County. We're continuing our tour. We were just in Greenwich seeing a lovely mansion. Now we're in Westport, another jewel in the crown of the Gold Coast of Connecticut, Fairfield County. I would like to introduce myself, Lori Paris Montezella, and this is my colleague, Jerry Jo Matika. She's a designer as well as a, a local resident of Westport. How's your day, Jerry Jo? Amazing. Could we ask for better weather? I mean, I love Westport in general, but wow, we have been blessed with an amazing day. So tell me, what do you love about Westport? So I just love um, the dynamic of it. You know, it has a little bit of the city sprinkled into it. You have all of the shops, you have the art, you have a great amphitheater. And the train. The train, I mean, you name it, we have it here. And then we have an incredible sense of community. There's so much for everyone to do at every age and every stage of life. So we just enjoy everything we possibly can that Westport has to offer. Well, the wonderful thing is we are so close to New York City. Hop on the train, you're in New York City in minutes. I love where we are today. It is an amazing property. It's a 1936 Georgian home, and I can't wait for you to see inside. Come on in. So now we're in the 1936 home of Robert Lawson a children's book author, Rabbit Hill he wrote, and you can see illustrations and examples of bunnies throughout the house. It doesn't matter if this is uh, a very formal structure, you can throw in whimsy, easy, and make it just super cozy. It's, it's just sprinkled throughout. I feel like it really highlights the gentle molding and the beautiful architectural detail in the house. Absolutely, and being that Robert Lawson did write books in a 
poetry sort of way, we like to say that this house is poetry in motion. So Jerry Jo, tell us about the design elements of this home. Uh, again, 1936 Georgian, so very formal, but what I love about this is a Georgian home has strong bones, so you'll see all of the, um, the casements around the uh, doors, the dental molding around the top, the beautiful inlaid marble, and then we're sitting here in this very comfortable, modern, at ease sofa. So even though you're surrounded by all of these really strong elements, you can put in the softer pieces to just make it so much cozier and more relaxed. Absolutely, so the decor sort of uh, can fit with the architectural details of the home. What's your favorite part of the home, your favorite room? So I have to say that my telltale favorite is the original, I'll call it the man cave, but it's the quintessential brandy, cigar, whatever your pleasure is, because there's a great bar in there, whatever you'd like to pour, absolutely. Yeah, and a billiards room. So I mean, it just screams, come in, relax, and enjoy. The additional elements that I love about this home is the incredible pool house. And I actually think the kids are home from college and they usually hang out up there. So why don't I show you uh, where the pool house is and you can talk to the kids and get their perspective. Absolutely. I'm Marcus Dimian. Uh, I'm Lucas Dimian. I think Westport's a great town to live in. We have the beach where I spent most of my time as a child. We have a great downtown, which has a lot of new restaurants. Yeah, there's always a lot of stuff to do here, which is really nice. Like whether it's like playing basketball at the beach in the summers, or even like the fall, it still stays warm until like October, so it's really nice to just like be outside. Now, you guys went through the Westport school system, right? Tell us about that. What was your experience? Was it uh, a good experience, especially for high school? Definitely. I think it was a great experience. A lot of my friends stayed through elementary school all the way through high school, and also the athletics were really consistent throughout the entire thing. I'm Jake Keelock. Hi, I'm James DeVore with Chilton and Chadwick Construction. And today we will be talking about multifamily investments in BlackRock. We've been talking about a couple of different renovations that we can do to this multifamily in BlackRock. And I know some of those potential renovations are opening up the wall for a breakfast nook, um, exposing the um, chimney for some exposed brick, uh, updating and giving a facelift to the kitchen as well as redoing the bathroom. So James, why don't you walk us out through a few of those things? Uh, to start, I think all in, you know, based on what we looked at, you're probably in for around $20,000 total. Um, again, opening up this wall here, gonna create a really nice, you know, improved flow, give you a spot for, for a breakfast nook, you know, a spot to sit and eat. And like you said, the exposed brick, you know, everybody loves the exposed brick. Facelift in the kitchen, great idea. Remodel the bathroom at some point, you're probably gonna have to, right? The roof, like we discussed, is toward the end of its life. You know, you should consider replacing that probably sooner than later. And, and like we said, some, somewhere in the $20,000 $20, ballpark for all that work. Again, depending on, you know, the finishes you select, you could go upwards from that number, but I think you're probably starting around 20,000. James, that's really interesting, thank you. Um, so Jake, this is really interesting. Before when we were talking, you said that you could probably achieve 1450 per unit per month um, in a pre-renovation sort of model. After speaking with James, what do you think you could achieve after a renovation as far as market rate? Post-renovations, I would say, up to 2,000 a month. Interesting, that's quite a big increase actually, per unit. So that's almost $1,100 more per month for the entire investment property. That's huge actually. Yeah. Now, I know you bought this for 320. What do you think you might be able to flip this for after the renovations are done? So being in BlackRock, it's a pretty desirable area and I have a lot of clients that are actually looking at the area. I would say 400 plus once all the re uh, renovations are done. Oh, interesting. It's funny because actually James's first investment property was here in BlackRock as well. So yeah. you guys will make a great team that way. James, what is it about BlackRock that drew you here? 
I think that there's a bit of a, you know, th there's some action here on, on Fairfield Avenue. Um, you know, a lot, of, a lot of restaurants and bars are walking distance. Um, so, you know, being, you know, young 20s, that was, that was uh, very appealing to me. So that's what drew me here. Uh, and then I ended up staying for about five years. So it's a, it's a great neighborhood. So James, with all these renovations that we want to do, what would you say is the timeline? I'd say you're probably looking about six weeks, plus minus a week or two, but six weeks is a good ballpark. Okay. Well, and James, are you seeing a lot of fluctuation in construction material costs or anything? Is there anything you know Jake and other investors should be watching out for right now with inflation the way it is and everything? There, there are huge uh, fluctuations up and down constantly of material prices. I think for the most part, the, the common materials that you use are not subject to huge fluctuation. Um, yes, there always is that variable, unfortunately. Is there any problems getting materials? Is there going to be any waiting? I wouldn't think so for, for a renovation like this. The longest lead time is going to be the kitchen cabinets. Um, typically in a, a common product that I use now, they're anywhere from six to eight weeks away once you order them. So in, in a renovation like this, that's probably the longest lead item. Everything else is, is probably fairly readily available. Excellent. With all the projects that we discussed, what would the time frame be? I mean, we could get started right away. And by right away, I mean probably next week, um, but there's no delay in, in getting guys over here and getting started. Fantastic. And how long do you think the actual project would take? I, it'll take about five to six weeks. Awesome. So we're joined with uh, Antoine and Suzanne Black, uh, the owners of several restaurants here in Greenwich, but we are at Orienta um, and we're excited to be here. Um, so tell us about some of your, your restaurants, guys, the history of it, how so, Orienta came to be. Uh, nine years ago, I, uh, I had a place in Manhattan called Opia that was very difficult and it was time for me to move on and I thought it would be a nice thing uh, to, to try to create like a vibrant, uh, French Bistro uh, and we opened Le Penguin in 2013 and then we had the opportunity to do the, the Fat Poodle in Old Greenwich and then we did this one which was the idea was to recreate uh, the first restaurant that I opened in Manhattan in 1995 after I had worked at two very uh, nice restaurants on the Upper East Side called the Bill Bouquet, it's a French bistro, and then uh, Le Colonial, which was a French Vietnamese restaurant. I thought I would just kind of uh, do a, a marriage of those two concepts, and I opened my first restaurant and I created Orienta. And, and so you started Orienta in the city, yes. but then you brought it back out to Greenwich. Yeah, I, had, I always had customers at Penguin say, when are you going to reopen Orienta? Na, 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 na. So finally this place came uh, available, and I thought, oh, okay, no one, why not? You know, we have a great little team. This little family team is, uh, it's passionate and we're good at what we do if we do say so ourselves and, and we like it, we like the challenge. You will not taste anything like what you taste here. Yep. How did you create the menu? What what went into it? What were the thoughts behind it? So when, when I first opened Orienta in uh, 1995, I hired uh, a consultant chef she was from Laos and she, we made a menu together with some uh, Thai cooks. With, with our son, it was, we tried to recreate that menu but with his uh, experience and Suzanne's experience because she's a good cook and uh, she's very passionate about food. It's like Adrian and Suzanne, they recreated the original menu but ch and changing things around. So I think it's more like that, it's uh, a bit more uh, towards uh, Vietnamese. Mm, yes, it, heavily it's really like a French Asian. Sure, um, it's, sure. uh, because we we, we can't say no to pad thai or tuna sashimi <laughs> or you know. Had, we have to have a few items that people recognize. Right. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So what we have here is pretty much our signature dish. It's called uh, the lobster shooters. 
And what you have is a uh, mango shallot relish, bite-sized piece of lobster tail that is flash fried with uh, panko. And what Gerard is currently pouring for us is a Thai curry coconut lemongrass sauce that is pretty mind-blowing. Chadwick, would you like to start? One of my favorite dishes here, actually. So I want you to give it a shot? Yeah. No pun intended. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> That is incredible, incredible. So many flavors. That's the Thai curry, the mango, the shallot, the, the coconut, the grass, the coconut. Oh, I mean, it's just insane. It continues. It's a, it's a star, but we have many, many stars, and we're going to get a few more coming right yep. over. Wonderful. We have two really special dishes here. Tell me about them, especially the first one, the spring rolls. So, uh, as we know, uh, uh, this is a, a, a traditional uh, appetizer called nem that is the, basically the Vietnamese spring roll. Mm -hmm. So you're going to take your spring roll, and then we're going to you're going to take your your leaf of butter leaf lettuce. You're going to want cilantro and mint, and then your carrots, and then you're going to roll that up, and then the, you can dip it into the, your sauce. And again, an explosion of flavor. Incredible. And so now we have this beautiful. Beautiful salmon. Tell me about this dish, please. So what we have here is our pistachio encrusted with a, a light teriyaki it's sauce. Gorgeous. I mean, the grilling aspect of this salmon is perfection. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's on top of a bed of uh, ginger, soy, shallot, and garlic seared bok choy. Wow. And that's also purple sticky rice. Mm -hmm. And then served with uh, always lime, lime and lemongrass and cilantro. Those are the three key elements yeah. of this cuisine. I've had in these past two years, more than 10 to 15 different customers say, I've got to tell you, I do believe that's the best salmon I've ever tasted in my life. Wow. I don't think you hear that a lot in restaurants, but I tend to agree with them because I have to have it at least once a week. <laughs> <laughs> so please. Well, let's try let's it, please, let's get yeah. A little slice here. Oh my God. It is really good. I mean, this is out of this world. Yeah. I think this is easily the best salmon I've ever had <laughs> in Fairfield it. County. Ding, ding, this ding, is ding. wonderful. <laughs> this was a real treat Thank guys, you so to much. be here today. So, we so really much. appreciate your time. So we thrilled. wish you the absolute best of luck. You guys have created an amazing restaurant group so far. If you guys have not been to Oriental, La Penguin or La Fat Poodle in Greenwich, you have to go. There's truly Chilton and Chadwick endorsed restaurants. <laughs> Thank you very much, Thank guys. Thank you, Chadwick. It was a pleasure. You're such a doll. And I look forward to seeing you guys soon. Thank, Thank you so much. Fun. Thank you, darling. Thank you very much. I can't wait to see you soon. The Tollgate Hill Inn in Litchfield, Connecticut has three buildings, over 20 bedrooms, a restaurant and bar, two commercial kitchens, wine cellar, ballroom, and an incredible amount of business potential. Potential business operations at this property include a bed and breakfast, restaurant and bar, weddings, special events, conventions, fairs, a spa, and so much more. In addition to three buildings, there are almost 10 acres of beautiful land. The entire rear two-thirds of the property is undeveloped and wooded. Some of the trees are tapped for maple syrup, which is produced by a small sugar shack about one half mile up the road. The town of Litchfield is known as a quintessential New England village, and the inn is two and a half miles from the Litchfield town green. The area is known for its antiques, artisans, and outdoor activities, and yet it is within 100 miles of New York City and 130 miles of Boston. Bradley Airport is within a one-hour drive. 
This 3,500 plus square foot home in Armonk, New York has four bedrooms, two and a half bathrooms, three living spaces, plus an oversized kitchen and dining room, and sits on almost one and a half level acres. The proportions of this home are perhaps one of its greatest qualities. Once you step into the oversized entryway, you are struck by the 16 foot ceilings there and in the living room. The main floor shares the living room, formal dining room, eating kitchen, and family room. The family room overlooks a beautiful flat yard with a gazebo and room for a pool. Head downstairs to another family room with a fireplace, radiant floor heating, and doors that lead to an additional outdoor patio. The second floor has three bedrooms and two full bathrooms, including the ensuite primary bedroom with walk-in California closets. Other features and upgrades of this home include new insulation and siding, newly paved semicircular driveway, underground electricity wires, underground sprinkler system, as well as professional landscaping. A lovely colonial farmhouse with Victorian accents, this four bedroom, two bathroom home is certainly ready to welcome its next owner. With hardwood floors throughout the home, original charm and function meet modern day living. The open kitchen has plenty of room to enjoy the amazing sunlight that streams in with an eat-in area that has a fireplace to cozy up with a cup of coffee. A dining and living room and front entry foyer complete the first floor. But don't forget, there is a rocking chair front porch to watch the world go by. In addition, there is a comfortable outside sitting area as well as a side patio. This home is a sweet spot indeed, and so is the price. Come on over and make 933 Randolph Road in dynamic Middletown, Connecticut your home. This wonderful property is close to everything this area has to offer and an excellent commuting location. This charming, light-filled, three-bedroom, two-full-bathroom home with over 1,200 square feet of living space is in walking distance to downtown New Canaan. The first floor is open concept with an eat-in kitchen that leads to the living room and French doors that lead to a new stone patio and the beautiful backyard. The first floor is completed with one full bathroom, a bedroom, and the main bedroom. Upstairs is a third bedroom and full bathroom, and the basement has both an in-home office and laundry next to a one-car garage. This home is perfect for first-time home buyers looking to get into New Canaan at an affordable price, or with the first floor and main bedroom, a perfect downsizing or in-between option. The location simply cannot be beat. Walk to restaurants, shopping, the train, and so much more. New Canaan has award-winning schools and an incredible quality of life. Welcome to Japan, a beautiful waterfront community in Stanford, Connecticut, with beaches, boating, and a wonderful neighborhood vibe. This turnkey home has three bedrooms and two full bathrooms, with a new kitchen, central heating and cooling, a finished basement with laundry and a separate office, a one-car garage, and a fully fenced-in backyard. The first floor's open floor plan is perfect for entertaining with access to the back deck. There is nothing to do but move right in. Your new home is extremely close to the Woodway Beach Club, Stanford Yacht Club, Cummings Park and Beach, and just a short drive to Harbor Point, downtown Stanford, Cove Island, Chelsea Piers, and so much more. It is just an eight minute drive to the Metro North train station. And from there, less than an hour by train to Manhattan making this both a work from home as well as a commuter's dream. Come be a part of one of the most exciting areas in Fairfield County.